Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. So I took the day off yesterday and had planned on taking today as well. But it's better late than never. No. I'm planning on taking another day or two this week. I'm trying to sort out a few issues and one of the things I'm planning on doing is more live shows. I will still be dropping a news video for the day but I'm sorting out a few stuffs to start doing more frequent live shows. Also, I have a crime and solutions summit coming up but I will tell you more about that. But stand by. Yeah man, stand by. There are great things in store and me now apologize <laughs> for coming out late today because i almost took today off as well but guess what it's better late than never and remember me tell you the news them a pile up now in today's news so on friday i carry the story about that guy on your screen his name is ricardo chambers he was arrested and charged for fraudulent conversion I told you that Ricardo, he had collected 1,000 Canadian dollars to build a bedroom set. However, CM was not delivered. Neither was the money returned. So that was what I said on Friday. And I am taking the blame for some of the comments I saw. No, 1,000 Canadian dollars is not the cost of the bedroom set. That was actually a down payment on it. Now, I also told you that the Portmore police, they were appealing to other customers who were defrauded to come to the station. Well, my information is that persons are flooding the station. And over the weekend, Ricardo Chambers, he was slapped with three additional charges. It is alleged that Ricardo, he took 160,000 Jamaican dollars from a female operations supervisor as down payment to build a bedroom set. Another 1,000 Canadian dollars was collected from a female banker as down payment to build a bedroom set. And another 200,000 Jamaican dollars was collected from a male teacher as down payment to build another bedroom set. But to date, none of these bedroom sets have been delivered. And Ricardo, he has been unable to return the money. So, the charges are piling up against Ricardo Chambers. Another lesson to be learned right here is, if you are going to be running a business and you know nothing about that business, leave it alone. Leave that business alone. Nobody go run it. Because Ricardo, he knew nothing about building furniture. Yet still, he opened a furniture making business. But the most important lesson to be learned right here is being honest in your business dealings. Do not take people's money and use it if you know you're not going to be able to deliver what they are paying for. I am expecting a lot more charges this week and I'll be informing you about them. In this next story, this one took place last night, Sunday, August 13, almost 12 midnight. It took place at Comfort Hall along the North Coast Highway in the parish of Chilani. We are learning that a party was being held in the Comfort Hall area. A lot of persons were standing along the roadside. A man, he was driving a blue 2015 Subaru Impreza motor car from Montego Bay towards Falmouth direction when it is alleged that one of the party goers he stepped out into the road. That party goer, his name is Kirk Downer, but he's popularly known as Tibby. Tibby is living in the same comfort hall area. It is alleged that Tibby, he stepped out into the road and he was hit by the Subaru Impreza motor car. The driver for the car, he ended up losing control of it. As a result, the vehicle swerved to the right of the roadway and stopped in a ditch. Tibby, he received multiple injuries and we are told that he died on the spot. Sad indeed. Now, in this next story, <laughs> why may I tell you? Listen this, listen this. This incident, 
it took place last night. Sunday, August 13, about 10.30. It took place at a guest house at Peter Pan Avenue in Montego Bay in the parish of St. James. We are learning that a guy. He's popularly known as Willie and he's living in the Hall Lane, Scottyard area of Salt Spring in the parish of St. James. Willie, he celebrated his 21st birthday yesterday, August 13. As a result, Willie was hosting his birthday party at this guest house. We are learning that Willie, he was in a room at the guest house and some friends and family members, they were sitting by the poolside when a white Toyota Voxy and a white Toyota Crown motor car drove onto the compound. You hear the type of vehicles? A white Toyota Voxy and a white Toyota Crown. Rich badness. You know what that means? <laughs> we are told that at least seven hoodlums jumped out of the two vehicles with guns in hands. The hoodlums, they walked to the poolside and joked down three youngsters who were sitting there. The hoodlums proceeded to rob them of their cellular phones and other valuables. They then pointed their gun at Willie's 16-year-old sister and told her to carry them to the room that Willie is staying in. The sister, she was reluctant and one of the hoodlums, he used his gun to hit her in her head several times. The 16-year-old girl, after being threatened with death, she carried the hoodlums to her brother's room. They knocked on the door and while they were outside, one of the hoodlums shouted, Police, open the door. We are told that Willie, he got up in the room and he was heading to open the door. And seeing her brother through the window, Willie's sister, she shouted to him. And this shout might have saved his life. She shouted, No open the door, a gunman. The hoodlums, they then fired several shots through the window, hitting Willie to the left side of his face and his right foot. The hoodlums, they then jumped back into the Voxy and the Crown, making good their escape. Willie, he was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was treated and admitted in a serious condition. The police, they were called and when they processed this crime scene, 22 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. So, this attack was a targeted attack and these hoodlums, they went to the guest house with one intention and that was to kill Willie. When I said rich badness earlier, have you deduced anything from that statement? <laughs> Boy, may I tell you. Now, in this next story, this one took place on Saturday, August 12th. It took place at a section of Paradise in the parish of Westmoreland, known as Cooley Town. That female on your screen, her name is Chantal Calder Whittingham, but she was popularly known as Pokey. Pokey was born on January 1, 1996. She lived at Brighton in the Little London Police area in the parish of Westmoreland. We are told that Pokey, she was married to a man who is popularly known as Lucky. They have a six-year-old son together. We are also told that back in the day, Lucky, he was usually in trouble with the law, but Pokey, she tamed him. Whenever you see Lucky driving around, it's usually him, Pokey, and their six-year-old son who are in his Toyota Noah. We are also told that they were involved in the fishing business. They owned at least one boat that is docked in Negril, and Lucky himself and other men, they would go to sea to catch fish from time to time. We are also told that they had some fish pots set off the coast of Paradise. We are getting unconfirmed reports that early Saturday morning, Lucky, his wife, and their son, they went into the Paradise area to draw some fish pots when they saw a guy who is well known to them. I'm also getting unconfirmed reports that that guy usually work for both of them. All that info is not yet confirmed, but we are learning that Lucky, 
he stopped and he was talking to the guy when an argument developed. The allegations are that things got heated and several empty bottles were thrown. We are told that others intervened and they also threw bottles at Loki and his wife. Lucky, he was hit on his right leg and Pokey, she received a cut to her left hand. We are also told that one of the guys pulled a gun at both of them. Both Lucky and his wife, they went to the Savannah Lamar police station where they filed a report. Now, they must be thinking that everything was done because later in the afternoon, they were back in the area. Lucky, his wife and their six year old son. We are told that they drove into the same Cooley Town area of Paradise in the Toyota Noah. They stopped and was coming out of the vehicle when they saw the said guys who they were in the conflict with earlier. It is alleged that all the guys were armed with guns. They opened gunfire at Lucky and his wife who ran off in separate directions. We are told that the hoodlums chased both of them still firing shots at them. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape. When the shooting subsided, it was realized that Pokey, she was shot. She received gunshot wounds to her head. From all indication, Pokey, she died on the spot. Now, all of what I told you a while ago is sad. But you know what the saddest part about all of this is? Everything that happened took place in the presence of their six-year-old son. Yes, this youngster, he witnessed his mother being slaughtered. <laughs> Boy, may I tell you, we are told that when the police processed this crime scene, a number of 9mm spin shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. Now, in this next story, that guy on your screen, his name is Ryan Cross, but he was popularly known as Max. Max, he was born on October 18, 1972. Now, people of Caldwell, if the year is wrong, please forgive me. But I was told he was born in the year 1972. He lived at Rima Lane in the Caldwell area of Hanover. We are told that about minutes to 2 o'clock, early yesterday morning, Sunday, August 13. Max, he was seen leaving a wakeyard that was being held in the Caldwell community. He was seen driving a blue Toyota Fielder motor car. But for whatever reason, someone wanted Max dead and hoodlums were waiting on Max near to his gate. We are told that residents of the area, they heard gunshots being fired. But we are not sure whether or not the police were called because... No checks were done. But about 8 o'clock in the morning, residents, they stumbled upon the lifeless body of Max. He was seen slumped over the steering wheel of the blue Toyota Fielder motor car that he left the wakeyard driving. Blood was seen oozing from all over his body. The police, they were called and when they inspected Max, he had gunshot wounds all over his body. He appeared to have died from earlier when he was shot. We are told that when this crime scene was processed, a number of 9mm spin shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, Hit on the subscribe button as also, hit on the notification bell, then click all, so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. And if you notice, if you notice, we are now over 197,000 subscribers. We are hoping to reach 200,000 subscribers by my birthday, which is on September 1. So by Monten. We are hoping to reach 200,000 subscribers. So, continue. Yeah, man, continue. <laughs> tell a friend. To tell a friend, if you run, come over here, so <laughs> come subscribe. Because over here, so we give you credible news. Over here, so 
we no pick side. The only side we are on is the side of the truth. Over Yasso, whenever we make a mistake, we are going to come back and admit to it. Making a mistake is not us trying to mislead you, but we are never ever there when the incidents are taking place. Alright, so if we make a mistake, <laughs> not kill with it. Alright, now, for the persons who are inquiring about the back to school giveaway, we have started to contact persons already. The truth is, not everyone is going to benefit. I wish I could, but it's just not possible. So, if you are not contacted by this weekend, sorry, but better luck next time. Alright? Now, in the final story for today, this one is bizarre to say the least. This one has jealousy written all over it. You have to listen to the very end. Now, a lady, her name is Mrs. Patsy Allen. She was born on July 23, 1942. Mrs. Allen, she is 81 years old. Mrs. Allen lived overseas for many years where she worked as a nurse. She retired and she returned to Jamaica and was living at Kendall in the Green Island Police Area in the parish of Hanover. Mrs. Allen, she has big children, including at least one son. Now, there is a reason why I said that. Keep on listening. Now, we are told that Mrs. Allen, she had a caregiver. Her name is Mrs. Tika Anderson Nisbet. She was born on July 15, 1950. She is 73 years old. Mrs. Nisbet, she lived in a nearby community named Grange in the same Green Island Police area. So, like I was saying, Mrs. Nisbet, she is Mrs. Allen's caregiver. Listen to me carefully now. Listen to me carefully. We are told that Mrs. Nisbet's husband, his name is Mr. Roy Nisbet, and he is 90, 90 years old. We are getting information from Credible sources that Mr. Nesbet, he has been accusing his wife of being in a relationship with Mrs. Allen's son. Are you following me? You aren't? Well, 73-year-old Mrs. Nesbet is 81-year-old Mrs. Allen's caregiver. But 90-year-old Mr. Nesbet, he's accusing his wife of being in a relationship with Mrs. Allen's son. <laughs> Got it now? All right. So, on Saturday morning, about, well, maybe 10 to 11 o'clock in the morning, Mrs. Nisbet, she left Mrs. Allen's home and she went home for the weekend. About 5 o'clock the same afternoon, a relative of Mrs. Allen stumbled upon her lifeless body. She was seen lying in a passage in her house. The police, they were called in and they commenced investigation. Mrs. Allen, she appeared to have died a few hours before she was found. Now, listen me carefully. This is not me trying to talk down to anybody. I'm just giving you the facts, alright? Now, I was reading an article in the Jamaica Observer and the article is saying that Mrs. Allen, she was found with several stab wounds. I have gotten no such confirmation. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the police, they are saying that no marks of violence was seen on Mrs. Allen's body. They are saying that no foul play is suspected. Hanover people, got that? No. here is what makes this story bizarre. Listen carefully. Remember that Mrs. Nesbitt, she would have left and gone home. We are told that family members, they tried calling Mrs. Nesbitt by phone all day Saturday to no avail. About 7 o'clock the same night, one of Mrs. Nesbitt's close family member, she decided to go to her home at Grange to see what was happening. When she reached the house, she observed that all the doors on the house were securely locked. As a result, she looked through the front window and she saw Mrs. Nisbet lying on the floor and not moving. The lady, 
She went to the back and she forced open the back door. When she entered the house, there was Mrs. Nesbeth lying face down in a pool of blood. The police, they were called and when they inspected Mrs. Nesbeth, she had wounds above and beside her right eye. She appeared to have died sometime before she was found. The police, they have established that Mrs. Nesbeth, she was killed. But the question is, who killed Mrs. Nesbeth? I can tell you this. All the fingers are pointing at her 90-year-old husband who, up to the time of recording this video, he could not be found. It has been speculated that Mr. Roy Nesbeth, him take away himself. Now, as soon as I get more information, I will certainly be updating this story. But in the meantime, the mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Popeye News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick silver sin If we just unite What a country this will be If we just unite Jamaica live in unity If we just unite What a country this will be If we just unite Jamaica live in unity hey. Crime it a mash up Jamaica Criminals them a mash up Jamaica Jamaicans mash up Jamaica Oh Jamaica me sweet Jamaica Show, show.